All right, everybody. So today we're going to be doing our, um, my version of the Four Thieves soap, which I use um, all natural colorants, which is going to be our oils. Um, totally the only colorant we're going to use is in the oils because I'm using an unrefined red palm oil. So it's going to make the soap a nice, really pretty orangey color. And then we have some toppings for the top. Um, obviously toppings go on top um, but we're doing the milk and oil method um, with this soap today and I'm the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm actually using um, goat milk kefir an organic goat milk kefir instead of my usual goat's milk that I melt with my um, lye solution we're going to be using water in our lye solution with a discount of the amount of the um, organic goat milk kefir that I'm going to actually be adding to my oils. All right, so the reason I'm doing this, I'm hoping the probiotics that are in the kefir will actually remain in the soap even after it has saponified. And because of the oils that we use in this soap, these essential oil blend can accelerate and get a soap pretty hot. I wanted to add them here in hopes that my lye solution will not heat up too much because of the goat's milk. We're using kind of in a reduced amount, but it is a concentrated amount of goat's milk in this kefir. All right, so make sure I got all that in there. And I usually soap at a 30% water discount, liquid discount, in my case, goat's milk, but in this case, it's water. Um, but we, and we're still doing that in this case. And I wanted to strain it just to make sure because the, um, the goat's milk, the kefir is pretty thick. And I do know that there are a lot of probiotics out there that say they that say they have to be refrigerated. However, I'm a firm believer that if it can't stay alive outside of a refrigerator, I don't believe it can stay alive inside a body, which is 98.5 degrees on average. And if you're like using probiotics in your dogs, their temperature is like 101. Um, their internal temperature of goats is actually 103. Um, so I would hope to believe that we, when we're feeding probiotics, eating probiotics, that those probiotics can live in an environment outside of a refrigerator. So we should be able to keep the probiotics in this because the temperatures really aren't gonna get above 100, um, I hope. Um, whenever I have tested this, throughout the saponification process. The temperatures haven't risen above 100 degrees. Um, each time I've tested the soap within, um, you know, a whole like uh, 24 hour period, I keep testing to see if it goes, gets any higher than that. It never has gotten higher than 100, so hopefully it will not. Um, but we're actually gonna go ahead and now we're gonna add, blend this up a little bit before we add our lye solution. And you can see our oils just have a gorgeous reddish color because of that unrefined red palm oil, which is actually from um, Baraka Shea Butter. And we're going to go ahead and strain our lye, even though usually I strain because um, I'm worried about fat particles and stuff, but just in case there's any undissolved lye. We want to make sure that we strain it. And the benefits probiotics can, why I would like it to stay present on the skin is there's many benefits for your skin um, because your skin actually has its own microbiome, just like every part of our body has a microbiome, our skin has one, and it's like an ecosystem for your body parts, um, and it regulates um, your inflammation levels, and it's a barrier against like pathogens coming into your body through your skin, because it is our largest organ, and highly absorbent, um, and the, uh, 
and your microbiome includes like viruses, fungi, bacteria, good microbiome, good microbes that are on your skin and or bad because that's why we have to wash to get off the, the bad bacteria and thing off, and um, viruses and things off our skin. Um, but it actually becomes, it's a really, really important, your skin is an important part in your, your skin health and preventing infections from becoming as serious and probiotics on the skin can help bring like your your levels back to a healthy micro, microbial all right so some microbes are either harmless or beneficial and the good skin bacteria help to kill bacteria like antibiotic resistant things like staph um, so your skin plays an important part in promoting your skin health and preventing infections from becoming serious. So, um, but if you have too much of a bad bacteria, it can trigger things um, like acne, and which internal factors can you know help that, such as you know like stress, your diet, um, environmental factors, like and even internal things that we take like antibiotics can play a part in our skin health because it's part of the. Um, you know, it's part of the whole body. So probiotics on the skin can actually help you bring back some of that healthy microbial presence and can help you reduce eczema, acne, dry skin, even wrinkles. So it's a very good thing. So anyway, we want to make sure we're hopefully we're keeping those probiotics from the goat kefir in there. But we're going to blend this up a little bit. <laughs> And I do say a little bit because our essential oil blend is a relatively, it can accelerate trace because of the essential oils that are in there. And you will need to work with an essential oil calculator to when you are working with these particular essential oils because the clove and the cinnamon leaf contain eugenol, um, which you don't want high amounts of that. And cinnamon leaf, in particular, you only want to use cinnamon leaf, never um, any kind of um, no bark oil, no cinnamon bark oil. Um, cinnamon leaf is antimicrobial and it's antiseptic and it's a para, paraticide, um, so which is the eugenol. It can kill um, parasites, that's what that means. And so we're going to go ahead and add our essential oil blend here. Clove bud is also. Um, antibiotic antiviral and it is a fungicide and you never want to you want to use clove bud you never want to use the stem or leaf because it contains more of the eugenol clove bud, clove bud contains a lower amount of the eugenol and um, it's actually a larvicide which we use clove in our um, herbal warmer that we use with our goats because it kills the larva of the um, parasites. And then we also have in here rosemary, which is antimicrobial. It's fungicide, fungicidal, um, antiseptic, and it's also a parasitide. And then lemon, which is antimicrobial, antiseptic, among other things. Eucalyptus, which is also antiseptic and antiviral. And then we have which is why I consider mine a fourth use plus because I add a fifth one, which is lavender, which is antimicrobial. It's antidepressant as well. It's one of my favorite essential oils. And it's a good one to have in there to kind of balance out the, um, balance out the blend because it is healing also for the skin. All right, so I'm not going to, I might hit this with a stick blender just a tiny bit because it's behaving rather well, so we're good. It doesn't, it's not getting too hot. Just want to make sure all of those essential oils are blended in there good, so that is good. And we're not going to be doing any kind of a, swirl or anything so we don't have to worry about it staying really fluid. We'll get this poured in and it is such a gorgeous color. It actually turns a little bit brighter and darker as it sits. And 
And one of the first soaps, I think I've mentioned this before, but my fourth use is actually one of the first soaps I ever made because I wanted to make something that was good to use in the winter time. And we did a lot of farmer's markets, so we were touching a lot of cash and, you know, wanted to have something really good that would kill all the baddies as a soap. And I was soaping at really low temperatures for my oils were like 90 degrees. Actually under 90 degrees, I think they were like 82. I like to soap around 90, but for this one I was going a little bit cooler. All right, so I'm gonna let this sit just for a minute because I'm going to let it um, firm up a little bit before I do a little texture on the top. All right, so I'm just using, this is actually a, um, I believe it's a, an artist scraper, a paint scraper, and it fits just perfectly inside here to do the texture that I wanna do, which is just like a, kind of like a herringbone pattern. I just stick it in as far as it will go. I'm just going to go sideways. And we'll turn around and go the other direction. And that makes a really pretty, in my opinion, makes a really pretty texture on the top. And then we have some, just a mix of organic ingredients. I have some organic um, ground coffee, some organic um, Rubio's tea, uh, raspberry seeds, rosemary, organic white poppy seeds, and some organic um, peppercorns in here. And we're just going to Take a little sprinkling of that and pop it down the side over here. Trying to get just a little bit of everything in there for some texture. And the rosemary, of course, the essential oil is actually in here, so. so those bigger pieces from the peppercorns. Now this has been, working with this essential oil blend has been like kind of like a life's work because these essential oils are rather difficult to work with. And you also want to make sure that you're using the correct amount so that you're not using something that is too hot um, for your skin. So you have to be really careful. Um, so that's why I say I don't actually give a recipe for this blend. I want you to do the research and make one up for yourself. All right, so that looks good. cleaned off a little bit. Those little organic thingies get all over the place. All right, so that is our Four Thieves Plus Essential Oil Blend, all naturally colored. 
um, of course, because we're using that red palm oil. So we'll be back, of course, and we doesn't have any swirls or anything, so the cut's gonna be pretty simple. But we'll be back and I'll um, let you know. And actually, I'm gonna do this first. We're gonna test it right now to um, see the temperature. And you can see, if you can see it on there, that the soap is 87 degrees currently. And when I'm gonna come back um, throughout the day in a couple, in about an, 30 minutes, we'll test it again. Then about every 30 minutes, I'm gonna come back and test it and see and make sure it doesn't, hopefully it does not get above 100 degrees. So anyway, I will be back and I will let you know. All right, so it's been um, probably less than 24 hours since we made this one. It's been about 16 hours, I think. And I actually had a lot of things to do in my soap studio yesterday. So I stayed in here pretty much through the whole saponification process, just going outside a few times to do some stuff in the garden. But I was able to check on this about every 10 minutes um, to check the temperature. And the highest temperature that we got, and I took a picture um, was about 106 degrees on this one. So I'm pretty comfortable that the um, process did not actually, um, would not have gotten high enough. It wasn't, it's even, 106 is actually below an even mild pasteurization. Um, so hopefully the good bacteria, the probiotics um, are still viable in this soap so that they do provide some benefit to your skin but do your own research find out what you think about probiotics how well they live outside the um, how long they live you know what temperatures they can withstand all that good stuff I think there's just so much information out there it's kind of can kind of get confusing so you just need to make your own your own determination as we do with most things so anyway we're going to go ahead and get this cut out all right, there we go. Hope I don't break any wires. This one's a really hard bar. Oh, all right. Whew. So we should be able to see, and you can, where this one, because of those essential oil, this one definitely goes through a nice gel phase, which makes the um, whoa, which makes the orange color really pop in these. And so our gel phase, which I took a picture of, you can see where it kind of, um, you can see the process of the gel phase really easily in this one, and you can tell that by that little circle right in the middle that this one went through gel phase. So that got to be about 106. That was the highest temperature I recorded. It was mostly around 90, and then we got up to 106, and then started dropping. My studio was actually a little warm yesterday. I had my heater on because I was out here um, doing a lot of things. If I had had it at its normal temperature, which would be around 65, these probably would have stayed even cooler through the gel phase, or I could have put them in the refrigerator but I don't like to do that too often. Actually, not at all anymore. I used to do that a lot when I first started making soap um, because goat's milk soap can get quite hot, but then I just um, started soaping at lower temperatures and I didn't need to do that so much. Because a lot of times if you go through, if your soap gets too hot, it can crack on the tops. And I had that problem a lot when I first started making soap because the going um, temperature for making soap was around 120, which is quite hot for, with your oils being around 120 in your lye solution, which is quite hot for a goat milk soap. So now I usually soap between about 85 and 92, sometimes around 95. And yesterday I actually was soaping a little warmer than I probably should have as well. It was about 92 degrees, my oils and my lye solution. So Anyway, that is our Four Thieves Goat Milk and Kefir 
um, actually just goat kefir, goat milk kefir, um, essential oil soap. It will be in our available and restocked in our website towards the end of the month. So we thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you would like to see more, if you enjoyed this video so much that you want to see us do more, um, you can always subscribe and we really appreciate every single one of our subscribers and say welcome to all of our new subscribers. If you're looking for anything in particular, if you like a certain type of video, if you like to see me cover more of the natural soaps because there are a lot of soaps that I make and a lot of natural products, not necessarily just soap. I have been doing body care myself. Um, for our family for over 13 years. Um, so there's a lot of things that I make that I don't actually put on camera or I don't actually film. So if you would like to see some of those things like our hard lotion bars, I actually need to be making a few of those. We've had a really, um, quite a long winter for Florida. Our temperatures usually don't stay cold for long, but this year we have had quite a long snap of some pretty cool temperatures so our skin has gotten a little chapped and cold with being outside doing so much that we do outside with our um, farm and our animals and everything. So, and my husband actually works in um, a very cold and hot environment depending on the season. So his hands are getting a little chapped. Um, so anyway, we're gonna be making some hard lotion bars. If you'd like to see that, I probably will actually do a little video on that. They're super, super super simple like dead easy like if you have the ingredients they are very easy to make and um, we are going to be adding a solid um, conditioner bar to go with our solid shampoo um, our sh so shampoo bars we're going to be making a solid conditioner bar to go with that I probably will not video that um, but if you would like to see something, you can always leave a comment in the um, comment section and we'll try to see what we can do. But anyway, y'all have a very blessed day and we will catch you later.